So I was doing some printing on the Mark III and started honestly having the biggest problems that I've had since I had the printer. Um, it all was dealing with the nozzle and extrusion and let me tell you about what I did and how I managed to make it all better. Stick around, take a look and see what I've done. I'm Ron and this is my place. So in the midst of printing uh, another project that I ended up failing on, I decided to make a kind of a functional print that I thought was going to be pretty quick and easy, which I'm going to cover over in another video. But I started trying to do a print and it started failing. Um, it specifically failed. If you look at this, it failed right at a point, as you can see, looking at this when there was a lot of retraction. Um, and as we probably are all aware, when you have a printer that is having to do a bunch of retracts back and forth, it tends to be a pretty pretty strong uh, attack on your nozzle and it'll tell you the health of your nozzle um, because if it's going to have a tendency to want to do heat creep or clog or anything like that, that certainly causes it. Um, now this was also a specialty kind of a food grade PLA that I was trying to do because of the project that I was working on and obviously it didn't print well. so. The frustration on this, though, was this is yet another situation that that the Mark III's filament detection was designed to fix. And I find it personally frustrating. It it fails. It, I'm sorry. It functionally does not do what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to detect that you have a clog. Yes, it also detects the loss of filament. Totally get that, and that part of it works great. It seems to have no issues. I don't really see any false detects anymore. Occasionally, I'll very, very rarely get one of those. But the other piece that was sold on the printer was that it was, because it was the laser, it was supposed to see the a clog happen and stop the print. Yeah, it stopped the print when it was a half an inch above the print. So it spent a half an inch of printing in the air. So it was, of course, a waste to print. So it was frustrating, but of course, I've you know, of the handful of clogs that I've done, I've had none that succeeded in stopping in time to save anything. Um, so I reprinted again. In the exact same spot, it tried to do the exact same thing again. Um, and this is one of the kind of a frustration that came out is it was really at the same spot. So I knew it was a retraction issue. I kind of knew what was causing it, but I was still trying to get the print to finish. So I quickly, since I was watching it during that time frame, I told it to change filament really fast. And a kind of a flaw of, of the whole situation kind of came too. So when you tell it to change filament, it of course stopped, went over just like it should. I was like, yay. And I told it to, you know, get rid of the filament. And it was jammed tight because it was clogged and was probably um, cold in the heat break. So it snapped my filament off. <laughs> I was not happy. So it snapped it off right above the Bontech. Um, at that point, normally what I would do is I would heat up the nozzle and of course that i've talked about it in another video you can't you have no control at this point over the uh over any of the heat so it becomes very hard to do anything to recover um so i started screwing with it and i finally got um because keep in mind that i had saved this one so I, you know, theoretically all i was trying to do was clear the clog and I managed to finally get the filament out. I managed to get everything flowing. And then I resumed it. And everything took off again. I see one line up here again that uh, that it started uh, under extruding again. 
and then I was out in the wood shop and when I came back in actually I checked it on the on my iPad over the network and I saw that it was clogged and printing away and I come came in the house to stop it and it was again half an inch above the print so fail two so this one clogged three times um, and at that point I was like okay there's obviously something going on this is not like it. This is that food grade PLA, but it's just Maker Geeks PLA. So it should have printed just fine. And I didn't see anything in there. I did send an email to Maker Geeks um, to, uh, Help Center or their help support saying that I was trying to do a review on some of their filament and I'm not getting reply. So I'm not super happy about that, but it's only been a, couple, a day or so. So hopefully they get back to me. I really, my intent was to be able to talk about some stuff, but. So anywho, what I ended up doing, because now I knew I had some clogs and no nozzles, the first thing I did was I actually tried a cold pull. And hopefully everybody's aware of a cold pull, but you basically just heat up your filament so it's nice and molten, and then you cool it all the way down. You want it to be all the way cold, so everything solidifies. And then at that point, you tell it to heat up again. You loosen, in this case, the two Allens on a, on a Mark III, so the things a loose extruder and then you tell it to heat up and when it hits about 70 degrees you just yank the filament out so it will pull and that way the Bontex not holding it in there and the idea behind it is you've just started loosening the, the metal around and it should come out in one good chunk and if there's anything that's in your nozzle it'll clean it out um I Thought I might have seen a little chunk in there. The I, It was really hard to see. Uh, a lot of times I've done this, especially on the CR-10, and you'll come out with carbon pieces. Didn't see anything like that. Um, but what I did do is, um, in the midst of some of the other things, somebody recommended cleaning filament. Now, I'm not, I was never up to this point much of a fan of it. I think it's gimmicky. Uh, I think it's, Another of those situations that, you know, if you make it, they will buy. Um, and I'm like, because cold poles and everything have always seemed to work for me. But because somebody recommended it, it wasn't overly expensive, I decided to buy a little bit. In this case specifically, this is eSun's version. And I also have another version as well that I was, I'm going to try at some point. And the intent behind this stuff is that when it... You basically heat up your nozzle to whatever is the, of what's in there, and the intent behind it is that you manually feed it, feed it through. Now, this is where, for me, it got interesting, is it's designed to be super sticky. You don't print or anything with it. This is all manually fed, and I basically started feeding it through, and it was intriguing because keep in mind I did two cold pulls with normal filament and got nothing out of it. I was pushing this through and it was just not flowing very well. It would flow, but it just wasn't perfect. So then after flowing, I flow flew flowed flew fl floated. <laughs> I put through about a foot of filament and nothing was really changing, so I decided to do a cold pull on it, because I've read that on the internet, and the internet doesn't lie. And I decided to cold pull with this to see what happens. And I cooled it down, then started heating it up at about 70 degrees. I gave it a good yank, and I thought I was going to yank my nozzle off the Mark III. Uh, it was stuck. It was kind of interesting. I could not get it to come free in about about 80. When it finally hit about 80, it just popped free. And what's interesting, and I don't know 100% what to think about it. You can be the judge. If I can get this to... I'm never going to get this to... Yeah. There is a big goober yeah see that white colored stuff that's a, a piece that's a, the shape of the nozzle 
um, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. But there's a big chunk of crap that was in it. And this is after two coal poles. This stuff yanks something out of it that was just lodged in there. And it's printing awesome now. It obviously had a partial clog that I just could not get free. So would the exact same thing have happened with regular PLA? Possibly. I, I don't know. All I know is that I tried two cold pulls, and I've done multiple before this because I've been kind of suspecting I've got something going on in there. And now suddenly this worked, and it's printing beautifully. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that cleaning filament is the way to go. I'm not going to tell you that it's all this awesome stuff. I'm just going to tell you for whatever reason it seems to work and I'm I'm a fan. And as little as you use, I mean this is going to last me like an eternity. Um, I mean I literally pulled, I used a foot <laughs> and it worked great. So I don't know. I think I may start using it a little bit more. Um, I've heard rumor that if you put it in there and let it bake, that it would actually kind of get more and more of the goo out. I I didn't hear anything that they were describing, so it just, I used it mainly as a cold pole. And it is sticky. It comes out kind of cool, too, because it comes out really, really clear and then instantly um, cools and turns opaque again, which is kind of neat. All right, well, that was pretty much it. So like I said, I had a couple failed prints, pretty much proved that I had a nozzle block. And I thought I cleaned it out and I proved otherwise. And I used this cool filament. I'll put a link to it. This is cleaning filament. And I'm a quasi believer now, I think, a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. But just wanted to share. I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. And I'm still frustrated that it, the Mark III can't seem to do one of the functions that it should. It's not cool in my point, mind. Sorry. Still love the Mark III, just not cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Again, subscribe if you haven't. Like it if you like it. If you dislike it, just let me know why, and we'll see what we can do about it. Hopefully you're having a great day, and remember, print everything you can.